Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. Automation is one of these topics that seem very daunting at first, and you try your best to stay away from it. But once you grasp the concept, it's something you just can't stop applying whenever you can. So today is all about automation in Studio One, and I want to show you all the different options you have available, why you should use automation in the first place, and also how much fun it can be. So let's just get right into it. And here I have a very basic beat going on. I just have basically like a drum loop, uh, my Thai bass line and a few chords. And right now it sounds a bit boring. It sounds like this. Right, this is nothing special. And whenever I find that there is some potential here to make this more interesting, I just start twiddling parameters that I have available on the virtual instruments. So for example, here on the Mai Tai, my first instinct is to always just grab the cutoff, for example, right? And then as the music is playing, I just fiddle with that, for example, with the mouse. And I find this adds some very nice animation to this baseline groove. But obviously, I cannot spend the rest of this production doing this by hand, right? I like to use my mouse for other stuff also. And this is where automation comes into play. Whenever you think that an animation that you're doing, for example, with your mouse or with a MIDI controller sounds interesting, just take a moment to record an automation for it. And this will then play and keep playing as you progress and do other things in your arrangement, right? This is how I would like you to think about automation. And you can really apply this with any parameter, with any plugin. So the easiest way to do this, to add an automation in Studio One, in my opinion, is to just left click the encoder that you want to automate. And then here in the top left corner, you want to make sure that when you click on this arrow here in the left box, that recently touched is currently engaged because then you see any parameter that you touch is immediately showing up here in the top left and that is an indicator that is ready to automate. For example, if I want to automate the cutoff, all I need to do is just left click that and hit Option and A on a Mac or Alt and A on Windows, just like that. And you can see I already have a new automation lane in which I can now record my automation. And that is today's topic, the different automation modes we have available in Studio One. Because you notice right now the automation record mode is off, so nothing will happen as we hit record. But we can click on that and we have four other options available here. And I want to talk you through each of these options one by one. So the classic option is right. And I think this is a really good option when no media automation or audio automation for that matter is written yet. And the best way to show this is probably with a MIDI controller because it makes the most sense in my opinion to write and record your automation with a MIDI controller. Of course, you can also do it from your mouse. But today I want to show you that with my trusty Atom SQ right here. And if you want to see how you can hook up your MIDI controllers in Studio One to record automation, I have my own dedicated video that showcases this in detail. You got to find that here in the top corner. That's not what we want to focus on in this video. In this video, we just want to show how to assign the controller once it's set up in Studio One and also how you can then go ahead to write automation for it. So in my case, I'm just going to use the touch strip that I have on the Atom SQ. And as soon as I touch it, you notice that here inside of Studio One, it says touch strip on the right side of this control link box. That is for the hardware controllers. So on the left, I have the cutoff from the Mai Tai because that's the parameter I want to automate. That's the parameter I click with my mouse. And the touch strip is the parameter that I want to control the cutoff with on my hardware. So now all that's left to do is link the two and we can do that with a click on this little triangle, right? So as soon as this is clicked, now you can see that I can do this with a touch strip and the Mai Tai is following along nicely. Now in the right automation mode that I currently have selected, we're basically writing automation all the time as soon as I hit play, like this. And if I hit play again, I will overwrite what I've just done because automation write is literally recording automation nonstop whenever a transport play is active. 
So this is a really classic automation record mode when there's no automation in place yet or when you want to override the entire thing, okay? If you want to stop writing automation, you would then set it to read. And as soon as it's set to read, then it would just keep on reading the automation and no longer receive any automation record input. Now, this is a fairly old automation mode, probably the oldest of them all. So it's not really my favorite. The next mode is a bit more sophisticated. It's latch. So latch works kind of like write, but it only works like write as soon as you touch the parameter for the first time. Okay, so let me show you this. Right now it does nothing. But as soon as I interfere, that's when it basically behaves exactly like write did. And what's also cool is that you don't have to set this to read once you're done. You can just leave it in latch. But of course you have to be very careful because once you touch the parameter again, it will overwrite everything beyond that point. Uh, so this is a bit dangerous to use latch all the time. My favorite mode by far is touch. That's this mode here. It's really the best out of both worlds in my opinion because touch will only override an automation for as long as you're actually changing a value. Right? As soon as you stop changing a value, the automation will just be left in place. So this is a perfect mode if you want to make very small corrections and um, if you want to record automation and not risk overriding it all the time without you noticing. Also, you do not have to set automation mode read when you're using touch. So touch is pretty much the best option out there in my opinion. Touch is just set and forget, right? So to show you how touch works, if I hit play, Nothing is happening. And as soon as I touch the Adam's Q here, then I'm altering the automation. But as soon as I stop doing that, I keep the automation in place. So this is really good both for corrections of automation as well as recording new automation. And if you don't want to spend too much time thinking about which automation mode is best for which situation, my rule of thumb is to just use touch all the time. So hopefully this clears up some of the questions you've been having about automation record modes in Studio One. And thank you for watching.